go. Yeah, my name is Nick Johansson, and uh, this is my master thesis that I did in at, at the new desk uh, here. I just handed it in a couple of months ago. It's about crypto processing on the Arduino. Uh, around about the time I started in August last year, uh, there was a lot of these cases, which kind of inspired me to try to figure out what's going on here. Why isn't the data secure? I'm a student, I didn't know better, okay? <laughs> um, so, just saying some analysis of the various uh, statistics from the, uh, from the leaks. I'm sure you've all seen the statistics already, so I don't have to repeat myself. Um, and we started analyzing it. And I thought, I, I knew this was going to be hard, but I hadn't expected it to be impossible. So, plan B. Uh, started looking at best practices, basically. Uh, using sources like that, like NIST, and then I thought and ESA, just to get an overview of what is the actual best practices in data protection uh, within the industry. National Security Agency and best practices in data security. <laughs> uh, it's their own stuff, so it's... of course they're gonna recommend the good stuff, kind of. Uh, hence the use of the elders as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, the basic uh, essentials is basically first off, stream versus block ciphers. Stream ciphers, they're way too slow. Or, and they don't, they are, they're faster, but they don't um, support the authentication and cool stuff like that. Uh, and looking at asymmetric versus symmetric, asymmetric is a s slow one. So symmetric is the way to go for data if you're going to make it fast. Which leaves us with advanced encryption standard, AES. And either of those two seems, the, the modes of operation seem to be the most common ones used, at least. Uh, or variations of them. So, uh, crypto, it's a hard problem, but we got a lot of really smart people working on it. Smarter than me, at least. So, it's a re it's to a certain degree at least solved problem. But the problem is, when you put the key, uh, you have to put the key when you do the actual decryption, encryption. And well, if you put it with the data, you might as well not bother. If they're going to run off with the data, user database, they're going to take the key with them. So, uh, uh, and. Kind of, NIST says it's best, really. Uh, they don't even mention uh, storing it with the data or on any kind of general server uh, uh, at all. So, the standard solution is these. They're really, really nice. They have a lot of uh, cool hardware and uh, support everything and yeah, you can imagine. Do a lot of other crypto stuff, but I'm going to know they're here. And uh, as I said, they're amazingly cool, but they're expensive. I found one, the cheapest one I was able to find was like 10 grand. Uh, it's, it's a bit on the pricey side if you're running a small business with a server in the back room. So with my thesis, what I set out to do was basically figure out, uh, make a device that's inexpensive, uh, fairly easy to use, uh, and has the basic encryption function of a hardware security module, uh, and basically key management, and by extension, crypto processing. In an inexpensive device that, this guy, yeah, okay, not that guy, this guy could use. Um, and, you know, having spent the summer toying around with the Arduino, it kind of quickly fell on this, which just happened to be released a couple of months after I started my uh, thesis, which was, you know, practical. It has an, uh, the first Arduino with a 30-bit CPU and an amazing 84 megahertz. Uh, as you can see, uh, lots of RAM and sufficient storage. The most important features are in terms of security in this is what they call restricted mode. Is that if you enable it, once you put 
uh, what they call a sketch, which is just an application on the Arduino, you can't download it again. And uh, they um, require, for this model at least, that in order to upload a new sketch, you have to raise the flash storage. So you can't write a new sketch that reads off the rest of the memory and just dumps it back. <laughs> and so my thanks, Jen, and you, and my piece of advice, I got two, uh, I got two of these to play with, and I started working on it. On the other side, I used uh, uh, C. I'll get back to that one later. Uh, and I used a uh, hand-optimized version of actual reference Im implementation that was written uh, by uh, Richman when he handed in, or when they made that AS uh, uh, yeah. um, And I figured, I'm not going to be able to do that efficiently myself, so I might well use someone who knows what they're doing. Uh, on the client side, I ended up with Java and using that uh, library called the Java Simple Zero Connector which is pretty much the most simplest um, library as we're able to find in terms of uh, serial com communication for the uh, uh, for our client. Um, I started off by implementing cipher blockchain, or technically I implemented an electronic code book, since I just put these, the actual cipher encryption on the device. Uh, and, yeah, ran it, tested it, uh, yeah, okay, that's not very fast. There was this point in me to slow. Ended up being around uh, 28, 29 kilobytes per second throughput, which, uh, yeah, it's not really, it's not impressive <laughs> at all. So I spent a lot of time kind of scratching my head over that at least especially the tail end of that, which didn't really make sense, until I observed one little thing. There's a problem. Uh, getting the, that communication link to use full speed of the USB is turned out to be uh, really hard. Ended up not being able to. Uh, sending the data from the Arduino to the PC was near uh, full speed. But the other way around, I couldn't, I just couldn't get it to uh, kind of work at full speed. Uh, so I went back to the drawing board and came up with that. Um, as you can see, it just it never touches the plain text uh, on, before the encryption. So you don't actually have to send the text up to the Arduino. You just send the initial state. And just then let the Arduino just spit out tokens that you can use on the server side. Uh, which, if you have that, you could also extend it into that favorite mode of all, it seems, which is Golden Counter Mode, which also has a function or uh, provides a tag that authenticates the data, which is nice. And I ended up with this. Which, I don't know, it's a lot better, but uh, it's not terribly fast either. Uh, comparing the two, I basically get this, which it's not going to be able to do full disk encryption, but 241 kilobytes per second, you can uh, handle pretty big user database uh, with that since most entries aren't going to be over 500, 500 kilobytes anyways, so, or 500 bytes for that matter. Um, and that was moderately satisfied at least. Um, and kind of uh, a few observations along the way. Uh, first of all, I started off implementing the whole thing in Python on the, on the uh, PC side. And Python is really slow. Uh, appending to lists in Python over a lot of data set is really not a good idea. So I ended up having to spend a lot of time just porting over to Java again. Uh, Arduino labels itself as C++ and C. 
Uh, unfortunately, it really isn't. It lacks a few essential libraries uh, that's available in C, uh, which uh, means that, uh, that most of the crypto libraries I actually found uh, couldn't really be used there because I would have to rewrite the entire library to kind of uh, pluck out the uh, the uh, libraries that just weren't available for the Arduino. Uh, and also, manual communicating on zero, it's harder than it looks. So, after reading a few standards, I'd rather do that. <laughs> so, any questions? Yeah? Have uh, you a chance to look at the UBHSM? It's uh, just the, the USB whistle that supports some crypto and it costs about $500. Uh, I looked at that and it had. It showed promise, but uh, I don't remember exactly why I kind of ruled it out as an option. But end up not being. So, but anyway, I'm just a little bit scared about uh, the size of implementing ECB mode because it's never um, used. Yeah, it, it, you leave the kind of mode operation up to the PC side of things rather than running it on the Arduino, which has a limit at the uh, speed of the CPU. So you can use it in B mode and current mode to get either of those. You can implement most uh, crypto modes of operation, uh, and you can basically get it. You just um, you just need to do the actual crypto and the key management on the Arduino, and the modes of operation kind of fall into the uh, into the role of the uh, PC side. Yeah, for my experience, I used a hard-coded key. Of course, you can upload it, you can actually generate it on the device. It's not a time-critical operation, so you have the luxury of being able to do that on the device. Uh, but since you have the, fl the flash uh, operation, where you have to erase the flash every time you upload a new sketch, uh, hard-coding the key isn't really uh, a problem, in terms of security, at least. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.